We want those life totals pressured. We want someone to draw a Sylvan library for turn on turn three and say, I ain't casting this. No way. I'll die. How's it going, everybody? I'm Josh from Elder Drunken Highlander, and I'm coming to you with a deck tech video for Eshai Kedis Flying Beaters. Manual burn, manual life total pressure. We have infinite combos. We're not using them. It's that kind of CDH deck. This is a control aggro deck that is just trying to pressure life totals, beat people down, and kill people with Eshai and Kedis. It's two commanders. Eshai says whenever an opponent casts a spell, it gets bigger. Kedis says whenever Eshai smacks someone, he also smacks the other two players. It's not commander damage, but it takes them off all of their life total as a resource effect, and it forces them to play differently. If they're not able to win that turn, they need to start thinking, will I survive until next turn? And that's going to change their play patterns, it's going to slow down their game plan, and it's going to force them to make decisions that they did not plan for when they kept their opening hand. And that's going to be what we use to leverage wins in this deck, disrupting opponents and beating them down. Also, sometimes breach combo, but not really. Before I get into that, though, I just want to talk about a CDH tournament that we're hosting here at Elder Drunken Highlander called the CEDH Tea Party. This is our second time running this event. The first one went really, really well, and it's going to be a 32-person, three-round, beginner-friendly CEDH tournament. So if you were thinking about entering a CEDH tournament for the first time and you were a little daunted by the prospect, this is the perfect tournament for you. We're encouraging people to call the judge. We're encouraging people to be respectful to our opponents. There's going to be very, very low stakes to discourage sharking stuff like that. The prizing is going to be our favorite cup of tea for the winner, along with a bunch of other stuff. We have an Original Print Proxies token pack that's being given by Original Print Proxies, which is awesome. They're our sponsor. They're amazing. And a bunch of other cool stuff like a custom Discord role. So if you're interested in entering a CEDH tournament for the first time ever, or maybe you just want to enter a low-stakes, low-pressure practice tournament to get some reps in, this is the tournament for you. Also, if you have a really spicy deck, we're giving out awards for the first place in the tournament and also an audience voted category for spiciest deck or favorite player. So if you think you got a deck that can win that, there is going to be a vote every round by the audience on our Twitch channel when we stream this, and the winner of that will get a prize too. You can check the details for that in the video description or the pinned comment down below. I really hope to see you guys there. I want to fill this whole tournament up. I want to stream it. I want to lift people up and shout out people for their really good plays. I want to see crazy good decks, and I want to see our amazing community compete and get better and improve. I, I've noticed a lot that people seem to be intimidated by these online tournaments. People have a lot of apprehensions and a lot of questions, and I'm trying to make it so that tournaments are easy for people to get to, to practice for, and not daunting to participate in. So if you ever want to enter a CDH tournament or you're looking for a chill place to practice, that's the place to go, the CDH Tea Party. Check it out. But right, we, we have a deck. We have a deck that we're talking about. Kedis and Ishai. So Ishai gets bigger every time an opponent casts a spell. Kedis says whenever Ishai hits someone, that damage is dealt to the other two players as well. This allows us to draw extra cards off of curiosity effects, such as Tandem Lookout or Curiosity itself which means that we have a little bit of card advantage in the command zone as well. I like this better than Ishai Jeska, which is a very, very similar deck that people also play. Jeska allows Ishai to one-shot players once it's at seven power, which is I'm pretty good. But what it does is it starts to create situations where you're attacking one player over another, one player that you actually need to kill can defend themselves, and you're just kind of stuck playing table police and not drawing cards, which I think is terrible. Whereas this deck, you hit everyone equally. So the life total pressure is more evenly distributed. Sure, the commander damage is focused on only one person, but because of the life total pressure being applied to all three players, someone having a crom they're sitting back and blocking behind isn't going to matter when there's like a Najila player with no flying blockers. So you can just smack. We can also just run Jessica in the 99, which means that we can tutor for it when needed and triple the damage on our Ishai there. But honestly, I don't think this effect is super needed. It's really just one to two swings on Ishai, and then everybody's off all their life total as a resource effects. And that's all the deck needs. From there, we can just pressure life totals down or win with a combo now that our opponents have to spend all their resources being able to untap again because they're dead on board to our Ishai instead of defending themselves against us winning with an Underworld Breach line. So it does, it's, it's great. It's similar to the River Song deck that I played in Path of the Peak last year where I top forward, where it's trying to create its window for winning, not by like knocking out all your opponent's chances at winning, countering their ad nauseum and all that stuff. You're letting your opponents play their stuff out a little bit and then using the fact that they've already overextended themselves slightly to start pressuring their life total, locking them down and making it so that they cannot win the game anymore. 
Speaking of which, there she is. It's River Song. She's in the 99. She's a perfect creature for this deck. She draws a card with Curiosity. She deals damage when our opponents do a CDH thing, which is searching. And she's a gigantic beat stick to help pressure life totals. We're even on Slicer Hired Muscle in the 99 just because he's a creature that gets out there and punches people to death. And that's what we want. We want those life totals pressured. We want someone to draw a Sylvan Library for turn on turn three and say, I ain't casting this. No way. I'll die. They'll kill me first. That's what we want. We want dead cards in people's hand, dead necros, dead nozzles, dead libraries, dead the one rings. We want them out of here. We don't want people casting that stuff. I want someone to look at their turn one one ring and their opening hand and think, I don't know if I can resolve this because if I don't win in the first three turns after sticking this, I am dead to the Ishai deck. That's what I want to be happening in my games. And I think that's a situation this deck is able to bring about very, very consistently, especially with the draw effects from the curiosities. Speaking of curiosities, we also have niv Mizzet Perun as one of our ways to win. This deck has a few win cons besides just beats, which are its most common way to win, and all of them are cards that double as value engines outside that. Just sticking a niv Mizzet Perun pressures life totals on its own, having a giant flying creature that deals damage, and keeps you in the game with your control pieces live by drawing you cards as well. We might as well just go over the whole creature suite here. Pretty standard stuff for red, white, and blue control decks. All of these dorks doing dork things. <laughs> Flame Scroll Shellabent is one that's really great in this deck. Silence effects are OP when you're trying to force your opponents to overextend. You can let your opponents get two, three cards deep into their combo and then silence them, which means that they've spent a lot of resources that they wouldn't normally have spent, and you can then stop them from doing more things. A lot of times a counterspell won't work in situations like that, but silence has allowed people to really play into getting overextended and getting blown out. And that's what this deck wants to do. In addition, when you're playing against something like Kinnin or Thrasios or another deck that's going to be triggering the Flame Scroll Celebrant side of this card, because, you know, the other side is the Silence, then you can put the Flame Scroll Celebrant out there and just beat people down with the Flame Scroll Celebrant plus two plus O oh, and the one damage. It also works great with Curiosity, so another good card for this deck. We have Grand Abolisher, we have Fimage, we have Sardian Avenger, another one that's great with Curiosity and beats down for damage. Scalding Viper is one that I really want to talk about. Again, another card to stick Curiosity on, but it has the Steam Clean mode, which is really sweet at bouncing non-land permanent. It can bounce a Ristic Study. It can bounce a creature that Cannon cheated into play. It's got a lot of utility on the Steam Clean effect, but also whenever someone casts a spell with mana value three or less, they take a damage, which is almost every spell in CDH, and it really puts the pressure on Storm Lines, which is great. Vengeful Tracker, another creature that deals damage for Curiosity that also puts the pressure on people trying to do big, bursty things. Go ahead, crack those 10 treasures. Delny is honestly the reason I'm talking about this deck right now. This card is sweet. They double the effect of every single creature in the deck, including Kedis. So if we tack someone for a 9, the other two players are going to be taking 18. That's disgusting. That's just gross. This is something that I want to be tutoring for every single game, and we do have a tutor package to be finding it. Speaking of which, there it is, Imperial Recruiter, Recruiter of the Guard. We have a Ranger Captain here in between that can find the one drops, but uh, it's mostly here as a silence on a stick, because this deck loves silence effects. Having a card like this in the battlefield makes these people that have to hold their stuff back, giving us more turns to beat them to death with Ishai. It's like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. That's more or less all the creatures. Nothing really crazy going on here in Sorceries besides these two cards here. Winds of Abandon is just a one-sided board wipe. That's really the only reason it's here. And Search for Glory is a card that I think is super good in this deck. It just gets so many things. It's here to search for a legendary card, basically. It can search for a snow permanent. We do have a snow-covered island in the deck. There's one snow permanent. But it's here to search for legendary cards. And, uh... There's quite a few targets. Slicer Hired Muscle is one of them. niv Miz Perun is probably the one we're going to be searching for the most often, except for maybe Jessica. That's another great target, too, just one-shotting somebody with Ishai or killing all three players if their life totals are low enough. That damage gets passed around to everybody using Kedis. We can also find Delny. If we have a lot of dorks whose effects we want to double, we can get Delny out there or just the double Kedis scenarios. If we want to kill a player with double Kedis damage... We can do that by, by searching up Delny. It also finds the One Ring, which is uh, really great if we need to go for the long game or protect ourselves from combat damage for a turn. We have a lot of ways to bounce this card, so it's not as bad keeping this on our battlefield in the long game. 26 Instants and Sorceries, which is pretty standard for a Jeskai deck. Even though this is a control deck, 
This is not the kind of deck that's running a ton of instant sorceries to do his control stuff. We're trying to pressure life totals. I want to sucker punch someone with a Boros charm. Now they can't use the effects that they planned around using their entire game because they need to make sure they don't die in their next turn. That's how I'm controlling you. But it is a pretty standard sweep besides that. Dovin's Veto, I think, is a card that should come back to the metagame. It kind of fell out when things got faster. Now that things are heading more mid-rangey, there is no better way to answer someone trying to win than a Dovin's Veto. This Underworld Breach is countered. I'm sorry. Go home. Trickbind's another really, really important gotcha card that we run here. I think it's sweet to just allow people to play super, super far into their win lines and then just trickbind them. That'll show them. We do have an intuition package in the deck of Underworld Breach, Savine's Reclamation, and Lion's Eye Diamond and or Brain Freeze, depending on what you got in the battlefield. That's a pretty easy one card win con to go for if we just need to push the I win button and combo out. But again, usually it's easier just to beat up everyone. Wear and Tear is another card that I think needs to come back in mid-range decks. It destroys artifact mana sources, it destroys the One Ring, it destroys Underworld Breach, it destroys Ristic Study. It's just a sweet card. Trouble in Pairs is out too, and this is another card that just destroys it. You know, that reminds me, I uh, I didn't add Trouble in Paris to the deck yet. I forgot to do that. Let's do that real quick. Honestly, I think Ophidian Eye is the, uh, the cut. It's going to draw cards less consistently because it has to be attached to a creature, and it is the worst curiosity effect in the deck. This is what we're going to get rid of. There we go. Classic Elder Drunken Highlander updating the deck live as we as we go. Artifacts are standard. We got Lion's Eye Diamond for Breach stuff. Other than that, nothing crazy here except Two-Handed Axe. This card slapped. If you watched our Anzrag deck tech video, this is the card that uh, I talked about, I think, the most in that video, or at least the most excitedly. This card just kills people. This card is a 7-mana instant kill in this deck. 7-mana with both your commanders out, win the game. Like, shit. I want to do that. I want to pay seven mana, win the game. Just imagine this. You have Ishai and Kedis in the battlefield. Ishai's got seven power. You have a Dockside Extortionist in your hand and a two-handed axe. You cast your Dockside Extortionist. You make seven mana. Then you play your Sweeping Cleave, given your seven-seven Ishai double strike. Then you play your two-handed axe and equip it to Ishai. When you attack, he doubles his power, going to 14 power. And then you deal 28 damage, one-shotting the opponent you hit with commander damage and doing 28 to your other two opponents. I don't see how someone wins after that if they were planning on doing anything involving their life total. If they weren't immediately untapping and winning the next turn, they need to kill Ishai or die. Those are their options. Untap and win, kill Ishai or die. I love this deck. It creates so many absurd scenarios. The enchantments are pretty standard, we're not going to talk about them. And we're on 27 lands, which, if you've been looking at my deck list slightly, that's a lot for me. I'm normally on way less than this. I just think getting that Ishai out on turn 2, turn 1 consistently is very, very important. So I put a few more lands in there to make sure we can cast a 4-mana card early. We're on one snow-covered land, snow-covered island, kind of as a joke for Search for Glory, and also just in case someone tries to make us of the moon so we can have a blue source to protect ourselves long enough to find a dockside. But other than that, that's more or less the deck. I'm actually not going to play test this one because it's a control deck. I don't think you guys would uh, see much besides like, oh, look, here's an opening hand that casts Ishai. I don't know what's going to happen next because it's a bunch of counter spells and draw. And just going into that, how do we even goldfish how many counters get put on Ishai in a turn? It's not possible. What I will say is I'll be looking to play this deck on streams and guesting in CDH videos coming up in the future. So keep an eye out on that. If you want to see when and where that happens, the best place to do it is look in our Discord. Where we post all of this kind of stuff and info on stuff like the CDH Tea Party, which is a tournament that we're running on February 19th. Check it out. I'm going to plug it all again. It's beginner friendly. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be great practice, low pressure, wonderful prizes, amazing casting. If you have a really spicy deck, you could win a prize just for entering the tournament with a spicy deck. You can go 03 drop and win a prize for having the coolest deck. It's a thing. Enter the tournament. It's going to be so much fun. We've been working so, so hard to put it on too. It's quite a passion project for us and I really just want to see it be successful. We have other links down in the description too. I'm um, plugging Arcane Fortress. They've sent us a wonderful and amazing deck box. It's really, really pretty. You can check it out in a YouTube short that we had, our last short. It's just amazing, honestly. It's a great deck box. I love the little magnetic thing on the side that holds your dice. It's just so convenient and so great. And you kind of like toss the thing against the side of the deck box and it'll stick on with the magnet, which 
feels really good, honestly. It uh, gets my little ADHD stimulation need going. So check that out. You can use promo code EDH420 for a discount on your order. Links are in the description. And also, huge thanks and shout out to Original Print Proxies, our sponsor for this channel, because they're also sponsoring the CEDH Tea Party. So it's amazing what they're, all the things that they do for the channel. It's just super, super great. If you are interested in getting some cool proxies, you can use promo code ELDER to get 25% off your order for Original Print Proxies down in the description, or you can check out the CEDH Tea Party and try to win some coming in first place. That's all I got to say today. Make sure you kill your opponents with combat damage, everybody. It's good for you and it's good for them. Stay janky, my friends. I'll see you next time. Enter the tournament.